Now, getting you closer than anyone else can. Your backstage pass. And a big North Dakota classic country KSJB. Welcome to Tommy Overstreet. Tommy, it's good to have you with us this afternoon. Bob, how are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. It's a little bit warm here. You're a kick back there in Oregon where you got a nice cool temperature of, uh, of 57. Now, what part of Oregon are you in? I live uh, about uh, 28 miles from uh, Portland. I have uh, I live kind of out in the country. I have a little, as we call it, the Overstreet uh, Ranchette. Uh-huh. And, uh, we have uh, three horses, two cats, and a dog. I told my wife the other day not to get anything else to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So anyway, and of course, you know you're out there in Oregon, so you know, you've spent some time in my old stomping ground of Spokane, Washington, haven't you? Oh, you bet, yeah. we've uh, I've been all over that beautiful state. It's uh, Spokane's gorgeous, and, and Washington State, well, you know, actually, uh, you know, I, I'm... I love the, the Midwest and, and the Northwest. That's probably my favorite parts of the world. I was raised in Texas, but uh, and I love Texas still, but uh, I do love it up in, in the, the Dakotas, and uh, I love it in, in, over in Montana, and I love Wyoming, and, and uh, I mean, I just really like the West. I'm, I guess I'm taken with the West. You know? well, you in fact, I'm thinking about doing a, a Western album, you know, about... A real cowboy album. I'm thinking very seriously about it. I've written some new songs, and, and uh, we're thinking very, very seriously about doing it. All of that area you're talking about has, has in common that it's a, it's a wide open spaces. There's, uh, there's, there's plenty of room to live and breathe. Yeah, I, I just, I, I, you know, I, I love this area where we live, but you know, I, I don't like going downtown Portland. It's just it's so hectic. I mean. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful city. It's really a beautiful city. It sits on the Willamette River and, and the Columbia River, and, and it's just beautiful. But, uh, my gosh, there's about a bunch of folks that live around here. <laughs> you know, so we get away every, as, as often as we can. My young daughter, my 18-year-old daughter, who just graduated from high school, uh, was just uh, uh, crowned Miss Teen Rodeo Oregon 2010. So we've been busy with rodeos. Uh, her, she even painted her horse trailer pink. Oh my! Uh, to uh, in uh, honor of, of uh, uh, the awareness of breast cancer, and uh, it was really kind of an unusually ironic thing. My sister has been diagnosed with breast cancer, and I go to Branson uh, this coming Tuesday. She's having surgery, and and they give her a good good prognosis. But uh, it's always it's always terrible. I mean these. These uh, horrible things that, uh, that come about with cancer is just terrible. Well, we'll be thinking of you, and uh, uh, you guys will be in our prayers for sure. Well, bless your heart, Bob. I appreciate that very much. Now, Tommy, you, uh, of course, actually got your original start. Actually, you were born in Oklahoma City. Uh, Oklahoma, did you ever get back to OKC? Well, yeah, occasionally. You know, I mean, of course, you know, being in, in country music, I mean, you know, I Interstate 40 goes right through Oklahoma City, so... When you left Nashville, you had to go through Oklahoma City if you're going west. And, and so uh, I'd always go through Oklahoma City, and I had a grandmother that lived there, unfortunately, until she passed away. But uh, I have a grandmother and a grandfather buried there. And and, uh, and here I get back to Oklahoma City. Is, you know, I don't have any family there anymore, unfortunately. But uh, uh, I do I do love Oklahoma, and they've been very good to me. And, and uh, it's a great state, great people. And, but, you know, we live in the greatest country in the world. Everywhere I've ever been, Bob, uh, everybody wants to live here. That's right. And I can understand why they want to live here, because we have opportunity, and we have freedom, and we have uh, uh, a lot of things. Uh, I'm a little concerned about our country right now, but uh, I won't get into political things. But uh, I, I, hope, I hope we can get it all straightened out and get back to uh, the country that I was raised in. Well... Tommy, we're all talking about that and thinking that same thought out here in, in North Dakota, and everybody I talk to is thinking that way. And, and we do have the, have the greatest country in, in the history of the world. And although uh, many times uh, around the world you know how uh, often we're, we're criticized, but when something goes wrong somewhere else, they come to the generous, good-hearted Americans to help them out with money and, and assistance. Right. Who do they call? You know, it's That's just it? like uh, like Ghostbusters. Who do they call, man? They call the uh, <laughs> and you know, they're never ever turned down. 
they're never turned down. That's no. true. And uh, uh, we do have uh, uh, wonderful people that have huge hearts, and they, they help people, and, and uh, they give very, very freely. And it's it's uh, I'm just proud to be a be a be a, an American, and, and uh, I've I've been very very fortunate in my life, Bob. I've been able to see half the world, and been paid to see it, and and that's uh, that's pretty special, you know. Oh I've yes. Over, I've had 33 European tours. I've been to Europe uh, 33 times, and, and uh, spent over two and a half years of my life over there entertaining our troops that were stationed there. And I've been in every province in Canada. I've uh, been in all 50 states and did three Caribbean tours. And uh, so I've, I've, uh, I've enjoyed uh, my career and had a great time doing it and uh, still do. So uh, I'm still still able to warble, as they say. <laughs> my guest this afternoon is Tommy Overstreet, uh, Classic Country KSJB. James Town, uh, Tommy's with us this afternoon, live from Oregon. Uh, you started out uh, your musical career when you were only 17, didn't you? Well, actually, when I was 13. Oh, when you were 13. I, uh, yeah, when I was 13. I, I, Tommy Sands, I don't know if you remember him or not. Tommy yes. Sands later married uh, Nancy Sinatra and, mm -hmm. and did several movies and had some hit records himself. But Tommy and I went to high school together, and and, uh, and he uh, he was singing on a uh, one of the last uh, audience uh, live audience participation type uh, radio shows in Houston on KTHT uh, in Houston, and uh, they had a, a host by the name of Lowell Pass. He was a sports announcer, but a really very personable guy. And uh, Tommy would sing a love song to a lady every Saturday morning. And uh, then uh, he decided to go to do a, a little theater present, uh, production, and, and he said, why don't you take my place? And so I, I took his place on, a, on this show called Kitchen Canteen, and, and uh, they had door prizes, and they gave gifts away to the ladies, and, and I'd sing a love song every Saturday morning to the ladies, and I was 13 years old. Oh so I guess when you start earning money, you become a professional, and I was earning money doing that, so it was kind of neat. And then you recorded, let's see, in 1960, you recorded in New York City at Roulette Records. I remember that label. Yes, I was. Uh, <laughs> I, that's a long story, Bob, but I'll, quick, <laughs> I'll condense it for you. Okay. Uh, we went to New York City to seek my fame and fortune. I, went, I was going to be a rock and roll star and uh, left Texas. We drove nonstop to New York City and, and we left Amarillo and moved. We had, we, 38 hours later, we were in New York City and uh, we turned down a, an offer. They were opening a new label. Uh, which uh, was kind of interesting at Columbia, and uh, it was called Epic. They had decided they were going to start a new label called Epic Records, and they said, why don't you be the first artist on Epic? And I said, well, let me think about it. And I had it in the back of my mind I wanted to be on roulette because my buddy, uh, my friend Buddy Knox was there, and, and all everything seemed to be happening at, at roulette. And... Uh, which that was one of my first <laughs> major mistakes. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I turned it down, and Bobby V, Bobby not Bobby V, Bobby Vinton became the first artist on Epic, and and of course uh, the rest is history. He was a huge star, and they they spent a lot of money. And and uh, had I not uh, had I done been, been a little smarter, maybe I, I would have done. Uh, Roses are red, my love, violets are blue. Hey, you do a good job on that one, Tommy. But, you know, you've done so much else that uh, things worked out for the best. Let's see, 1967, uh, you were hired to manage Dot Records in Nashville. That's a label that is well-remembered. And then in 1970, you decided to pursue a recording career, and you established yourself as a country hit maker. And now that was the year you came up with the top five hit Gwen, congratulations. That peaked at number five on Billboard, didn't it?